which is best, a Porsche Cayman GT4 RS or a Porsche 911 GT3? Well, we're going to find out. Now, how are we going to find out, racing driver Sam? Well, Matthew, we are going to drive them both to Spa and we're going to do two days at Spa. And at the end of those two days, we're going to find out. Part of this is to see what they're like for actually traveling to a racing circuit in. And then the other part is to see which is the best on track. There is the argument that's going to annoy a lot of people that this has got the better chassis. No! Which is why it was held back with engines, but now it's got a GT3 engine. Don't believe that. And I've won a championship in one of these, so I've got kind of an emotional attachment to that. Do you think you're going to be quicker on track in that? I think it's just going to be a quicker track car, yeah. Okay. I think I'll be quicker in the GT3. I think for the journey down, I'd rather be in the GT3 than the GT4 because of too much induction noise. It's going to be the same, isn't it? It's the same engine. It's no, same it's closer engine. to you. Anyway, we're going to find out. Let's get and do this. Buy, sell, car, wow. We're going to start off this video by comparing both these cars aero. So here we have the rear wing of the GT3 and a selection of food that Sam has procured from the Eurotunnel Flexi Plus. So this is your free food that you've got. So you've got quite a nice variety of food. We've got like Apples. fruits, we've got some little desserts, we've got crisps, yeah. plenty of drinks and a couple of sandwiches. But I think the wing on this isn't quite as good as the wing on the GT4 RS and I'll explain why now. So if you look here, Sam, what I've done with the GT4 RS's wing, yeah. I've been able to fit a lot more stuff on it and I think my display of food is better organised than yours. Well, yeah, but the brief was to put all your stuff on the wing and you've gone and separated and come compartmentalized everything and you've sectioned it all and there's considerably more stuff than me that's not to say my wing couldn't have taken more stuff you have just physically taken more stuff okay. why is it all separated though anyway i just thought it looked neater but i was a bit disappointed that i had to put these drinks there rather than having them in this area because this wing is slightly sloped towards the edges and they were toppling off which i think is a problem with this particular car that you don't have on the gt3 I'm glad we've cleared all this up though. Mm. Seeing as we've covered off the fineries of both cars' aerodynamics, probably worthwhile now to talk about what they're like when you're driving to your track day down the motorway. So far, I've done about four and a half hours in this GT4 RS and it's averaging 21.2 miles per gallon. That's just cruising at motorway speeds. Another thing I've noticed is it's quite a loud car. It's quite a bit of road noise and wind noise and quite a lot of induction noise. But I don't mind that at all because this engine sounds fabulous. So look, if I floor it in seventh, that's pretty loud, isn't it? But it could be even worse if I had the sports exhaust on maximum noise. So listen then, you get this droning sound, which is not pleasant like the induction noise. Let's turn that off. Sometimes what I like to do is play with the different sounds this engine makes, depending on where you are in the rev range. So this is seventh gear, low pull. Okay, what I'm gonna do now though, is go into fourth around five, but get undertaken by that idiot. Here we go. It's like a buzz saw, isn't it? Like a circular saw cutting through wood. <laughs> and then I can go into third, higher up the rear range still. Here we go. So around six and a half, seven. It's like a much smaller, faster saw. And then if we want to go full out crazy, let's get all the way up there in second. Listen to this. It's almost like the dentist drill. <laughs> crazy. Maybe that's why I haven't had such good economy out of this car because I'm busy messing around doing that kind of nonsense. I wonder what it's like in the 911. Let's find out. Let's have a word with Sam. Hey Sam, how are things with you? Is it noise in your car or, or is it just reasonably placid but you're having fun with the engine note like I am? You know what, it's not that noisy in here. There's definitely no induction noise so it's, it's not too bad. And my back is doing much better in these seats so maybe I did them a disservice last time. You mean last time when I was in the turbo and you were in a GT3 and you said it was really uncomfy. 
tell you the truth, I've been finding the seats a little bit overly firm and a bit, you know, I want to recline it a bit more, but I can't because it's like a fixed bucket. I can only move it up and down. But I suppose being able to just go up and down is enough for most people. Yeah, that's the only thing missing. If you could just recline this seat a little bit, just a little winder, and it would make the world a difference. Do you know what though? I'd like to just swap into your car to just compare it to this one, see which one is the least bad and which one actually has the best engine notes. I think it's gonna be this, but I need to try it for sure. Okay, and now in the GT3, and let's have a listen to the engine. So drop it down some gears, lots of gears. Sounds really good. And compared to other cars, it's amazing. But compared to the GT4 RS, just not as good. You don't feel like you're playing a musical instrument like you do in that car with all the different noises, depending on where you are in the rev range. I'm not getting quite the same buzz saw effect, and I'm certainly not getting the dentist drill. It's mad because it's the same engine, but the placement of it further away from you and the fact you don't have the induction right by your ear hole means it just doesn't sound the same. And you might think, well, you know, the flip side is it's less intrusive when you're cruising along, less droning. But actually, I find it slightly more annoying in this car. And that's because I can't hear the engine quite as well. I don't get the enjoyment from the clarity of the engine notes whenever I just flex my right foot a bit. And I think the best way of explaining it is it's a bit like the difference between listening to music in your own house and being able to hear every single note. And then when your neighbor is playing music, even if it's music that you like, it's always more annoying because it's ever so slightly muted. And you can't hear it so well. It's just like, you know, that's what it's like with these two cars, surprising. There's now another noise I'm not really enjoying in the GT3. Terrible road noise. To be fair, this surface that I'm driving on now is pretty bad. The big, big tires, lack of insulation means it's really, really loud in here. It's probably pretty bad in the GT4 RS. This is unbearable. Did you, I don't, I don't know when the surface changed. It just got really loud, didn't it? Absolutely awful. It's probably even worse in this than in yours because I've got even wider tires. We're on Pilot Sport too, so they're good tires. This is just, I don't know. It doesn't feel rough, does it? But that's the problem with these kind of cars. There's not so much sound insulation. <laughs> One thing I've noticed, the economy in this is slightly better than in that. I wonder if that's because you're more inclined to play with the engine and the revs in the Cayman than you are this because of that better induction sound. Who knows? God, I wish this noise would just stop. Oh, that's so much better than the change of tarmac. Oh, relief. I tell you what, it's a bit of a relief jumping into this car after that car in terms of the interior. It just feels way more modern. And I'm especially relieved that I've got Android Auto. That car had Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto. This has both. Hey Sam, what do you think of the interior of that GT4 RS? Yeah, I mean, I quite like it. The Alcantara is a nice touch on the dash. I don't know, it's all just a bit dated looking to me. Yeah, I agree with you. The reason you've got Alcantara on the dash is because that car's fitted with the Vysap pack. How are you finding the seats? I actually find this seat more comfortable. I don't know if they're any different, but to me and my bottom, this feels softer. Well, do you know what, Sam? Your bottom is very discerning. You see, the seats are the same. Well, the structure of the seats are the same, but that one is fitted with the upgraded body form inserts. So it's an optional extra you can fit, which just has a slightly softer feel to it. I remember the body form ads. Is that what you're talking about? I don't think it's that, but try it. Do a little wee, see if it's absorbent. That ship has sailed. This is a long drive. Oh no. Sam, I need to get your opinion on the design of these two cars. I mean, for me, it's easily the 911. All day long. It's too busy, isn't it? It's like it's trying to be something else. It's trying to keep up with this, and this is just clean lines. And there's a few little aspects on it that make it GT3-ish, but it's clean and nice, I think. Yeah, I agree with you totally. This obviously has like the cutaways here in the wheel arches, which you don't get on the normal Cayman. And it's got the Visac pack, so you get the carbon on the bonnet and on the door mirrors and on the wing. But this one has the optional carbon roof, and I think that needs a carbon roof as well in some way. Definitely. I thought they came with a carbon roof. I no. I really did. I'd even paint it black to make it look carbon. <laughs> <laughs> make it look rubbish. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. To be fair, I like the side profile of the Cayman, but the front and the rear just 
don't compare to the 911. And to be honest, a side profile either, because just the 911 classic shape is what you want, isn't it? So then, sorry, Cayman owners, your car just doesn't look as good. Okay, Sam, let's start off on a twisty road. Oh, come on. <laughs> Stop messing around. Well, I'll tell you what, it's got a front end on it, hasn't it? It's so, so precise the steering on this. And the suspension feels fine, though. This road is like glass, isn't it? It'd be interesting to try it on crap British roads. Do you look worried then that we're just gonna go to the ABS and open that? <laughs> what do you mean, gonna go into the ABS? Right, I'm gonna open it up now. <sighs> do you know what? This thing just feels so planted, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just stable, isn't it? <laughs> There's no traction control light coming on. It's just putting all its power down because you've got the engine just slung out over the rear axle. So much traction with a 911. And the direction change is just so good. Double wishbone suspension on the front axle just makes it feel totally dialed in. Oh, it's so good. But while it's really, really quick, it doesn't feel insanely quick and i'm not sure that's the engine notes just not totally crazy like in the cayman i don't know or maybe it's the traction the cayman feels a bit more leery is it a product of a refined car the best cars don't feel that fast it's funny that you're saying it's a refined car because it's not that refined but compared to the cayman it sort of is anyway let's try it in town to see what it's like when you're just pottering around okay sam what i'm going to do here is look for all the bumps and potholes that we can test the suspension. Let's go over this bit as well. <laughs> I've got the gearbox in auto mode as well. You know, in manual, it's just bang, 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 every single gear. Now, it's just like a normal auto. It's just smooth and easy. Look, even over these bumps, I think it's all right. That doesn't sound so good. You can tell there's less soundproofing than in something like a Turbo S, isn't there? A lot less, but that's weight, isn't it? That's the whole point. Yeah, and still practical and like racing cars you've got a decent sun visor do you just have like a strip in the racing car yeah and you kind of put your visor down a little bit as well oh yeah you have a visor because you've got a helmet on and you know that brings you on to visibility because it's actually really quite good so the dash is reasonably low so you get a decent view forward big windscreen even though you've got a big wing like bisecting the rear window the view out the back is still good plus if you look over your shoulder like if you're doing u-turns yes there's a cage there but you can still see past it to that little quarter light which is really handy when you're doing a u-turn which is what i'm about to do now question is will i make it round in one go what do you think yeah it's still a road car isn't it yeah so there should be enough lock on it we think here we go yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Once again, go to the side of the road through the oh bumps. This is like our roads in the UK. Come on. It is a firm riding car, but it's not truly awful. It's livable. It's livable for you to drive to the racetrack and back. I don't know why you'd have this car if you're not going to take it to a racetrack. No, I would. I like it. I like the feel. I like the feedback. I like the stiff suspension, even though I might not ever take a car like this to the racetrack. I mean, maybe once or twice, but I think it's fine. See, I'd do that because I'd want this car for that engine because the engine is just so special so i can put up with a bit of this it's not terrible but i wonder it's in normal mode now yeah why it's so stiff in normal can they not go any softer in normal mode than this because you're not going to run normal mode on a track are you no. So why isn't the normal mode more compliant that is a really good question i put it into sport now so it's stiffer you can feel it already i think it might be to do with spring rates there's only so much you can do with dampers that if your spring rates are stiff you're always going to feel quite a bit of stiffness um, anyway, I'm not making sense anymore. Let's <laughs> jump into the Cayman and you can drive. <laughs> okay, Sam, you got to do what I did, find all the bumps. Very similar. It's very similar, <laughs> but I think this is a bit softer, but I don't think it's as compliant. It's the worst of both worlds. I think it's a bit more bumpy. Visibility. I'm going to put this down because I can't see much. I think the dash is higher in this. The dash is higher, but the seat position is higher. So I do like the A-pillars as they sweep around like the 911 because it, it kind of brings it back behind your eye line. I actually don't think the visibility forward is as good as in the 911. And this thing that's definitely better, do a U-turn and you'll see exactly what I mean. You can see, look, oh, you didn't yeah, do it at all. Vanished. There is no visibility there is over your shoulder. There is nothing at all. That, there? That's because the air intakes go in where you'd normally have the little quarter light on the normal Cayman, and it's a real pain when you're pulling out of junctions and doing manoeuvres such as that if you bother to look over your shoulder. People have seen you. You're in a bright yellow car. Exactly. They'll stop. It's yeah. all going to be fine. Look out the back window. That's a nice bit of scaffolding, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And so, a wing. <laughs> yeah, so you've got wing, 
like on the 911, but it's a bit more intrusive and the scaffolding is more intrusive, the roll cage where it cuts across, plus the back window is just smaller in itself. So for general town driving, I think the 911 has the edge. Definitely. Let's go onto a twisty road though and see if the Cayman is better there. Manual. Manual mode, exhaust on. DDK this, this off. Traction off? Yeah, absolutely. Why would we want it on? Just because you're a racing driver, I'm going to turn it back on. It's, it's better. It's not better. It is, it, that, honestly, it's, I'm buying this car for the engine and I hear it better in this. You're the kind of person that goes to a concert and you ask them to turn the bloody music down. It feels faster. The noise makes it feel faster. It does. Oh, listen to that! Yeah, but that high rev range bit doesn't sound any different to me. This no, it does. Wait, when it gets over eight. Yeah, that little bit of resonance. That bit between eight and nine, it's, yeah. it's just an orgasm. It, that's, that's basically the car version of coming. It's, it's that bit where it's like, ding. <laughs> <laughs> and we noticed there, it doesn't put the power down quite as well, does it? And it had some understeer as well. <laughs> oh, okay. It doesn't feel quite as precise on the road, but that noise is worth it, unless you've got a passenger and you want to chat, in which case, forget about it. Yeah, but imagine well, we've just done one, a long journey. But it was fine, I preferred the noise. Anyway, that's enough about like noise and stuff like that, something that's subjective. Let's go on to something that's completely objective. One of the great things about Porsches is that they are practical sports cars because you have some luggage capacity, don't you, Sam? Luggage is everything in my game. <laughs> luggage is everything. Space for your helmet, for your race suit, and all that kind of stuff. I haven't done any research to find out the actual volume of these front boots, so we need to test them with our bodies. So I'm gonna go first and illustrate a really important mm -hmm. car front boot practicality test. So you just get in it like that, and then make a mental note of how comfortable you feel. Yeah. So I've got that. So now you have a little go as well, there. Have a think. It's quite nice. Okay, memorize that. And now we're going to jump into the 911 and do the same thing. Okay, yeah, mental note of that. Don't give me a verdict yet. You got that? Come on, out. Now, after three, you're going to say which one you think is bigger and we'll do it together. Three, two, one, 911. Cayman. Really? Yeah. Okay, right, what we're going to do now is someone's going to have done some research and we're going to flash up on the screen the boot capacity to see which is the largest. That means they're relatively close, right? Because Yeah, my feet felt closer to my bum in the Porsche than the Cayman. So I like to... They're both Porsches. Sorry, but shut up. <laughs> my legs felt further away from me than okay. the Cayman. Anyway, <laughs> there is something different between these two cars yeah. and it's this. So the Cayman has some more storage here at the back. And this made a big difference, actually. It does matter having this, and once again, we're going to illustrate it like this. Mm. Obviously, you're not going to be able to shut that, but that's quite roomy for me. That's very roomy. It's all right, isn't it? If I was my helmet, I'd be happy in here. You are a helmet. Thank you. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> he does MMA fighting and stuff. I have to watch myself. <laughs> right, this is more practical, I think, but I would actually say the 911 is more practical because you've got back seats, but that car has the cage. And if you get in the wing car, you have to have the roll cage, which means you can't really use the back seats for storing luggage. And have you tried to put a bag in and then take Through, a bag out? So, so difficult. Nightmare. So this is the more practical car if you have the cage with the 911. Oh, what we should do is just flash up the actual boot volume here as well because we didn't check the stats. Here we are at Spa Frankenchamp, courtesy of RMA Track Days. Thank you for inviting us, guys. Now, there's something special about RMA Track Days, isn't there? What is it? Oh, you mean the overtaking rule? The overtaking rule. What is it? You can overtake on the left and on the right. You see, normally on a track day, it's on the left and on the straights only. But on an RMA day, you can do both sides. So as a driver, it means you've got more options to get past and there's less of a train of people waiting to overtake. So it's it means good. that racing driver Sam can go quicker, right? And bully people out of the way. Anyway, huge thanks to RMA Track Days. Cheers, Check them out in the link right in the description, rmatrackdays.com. Thanks. Finally then, we're gonna head out on track, start off in the Cayman GT4 RS. Ooh, it's exciting. Here we go. 
go and get some heaters in the tyres. So a bit steady and gentle to begin with. Oh, the noise. <laughs> yeah, down the Kimmel Straits going to get a bit annoying after a while. It just seems so easy, this car, to drive. Really predictable. Brakes seem nice and solid. Love the carbon ceramics. I would never have a GT car without them. Some people do. Some people prefer to go for steels just because they think it's going to be cheaper if they're doing a lot of track days, but I would always want the carbons for less of unsprung mass and just greater longevity on the track. And, big thing for me, from a style point of view, carbons, you don't get the brake dust like you do with steels. It's so benign, this car, isn't it? Yeah, you can feel how short it is. It does ask a lot of the front axle, though, I can feel it. Yeah, it starts to push and run wider a bit. Let's, come on, get to temperature tyres. Right, here we go. This is the start finish line, and then let's go for it. What's that wash in there? Yeah, but then it starts to rotate beautifully. That's the great thing about the mid mounted engine. Horrible, oh Rouge. Ah, scary but great when you hook it up. That was marginal track limits. Yeah, I know, but I, I think I was in track limits. <laughs> Come on, let's bring it out. Come on, Cayman. Oh, the brakes are stonking. Hey. <laughs> Get it in. Chase it. Yeah, chase it. Chase it. Really rotate the rear. Then the dip really works beautifully. Just to hook you up and drive you around the corner. Better watch this old timer. Look at him drifting it. <laughs> Looks so cool. Uh. Second gear this time. Whoa, there you go, in you go. Hook it up. Got Take it. The line now. The line. Oh, it's good being able to overtake on both sides. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, you do get some push on the front axle, but my God, it's just so predictable and easy to control. I absolutely love this thing. So we're gonna jump into the GT3 and gotta say, it's gonna have a lot to live up to if it's gonna be better than this, because this was epic. Really good. A lot of your time to me is gonna be in the high speed stuff where it just takes balls. But it's not to do with your bravery, it's just your lack of confidence in yourself. It's not a lack of confidence in myself, because if something goes wrong at those points, just one slight error, while you might be able to save it, I'm literally done, I will not have any answers to a sudden tank slapper. Agreed, but at some point, you gotta go. But, but have I? No, that's fair I, I'm too. I'm middle-aged, I've got a kid, I've got nothing to prove. Yeah, this is not point. my job. This is me having fun. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> so there. Yeah, I'll take that. And I'm very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I blow your own trumpet. You know what we're going to do now, though? Let's send you out to set some base times in both cars. Let's send cameraman Adam out. He's never been on a track before, and he's certainly never sat next to you driving. A few moments later. Hello, could I get a cappuccino, please? Yeah, absolutely. Also, these flapjacky things look lovely. Can I have one of yeah. them? Uh, excuse me. Would it be possible at all to just, like, stop the track for a bit? Because I've... I've always wanted to have a little walk around Eau Rouge. Of course not. Shut the track. Shut the track. Shut the track. That was amazing. Oh my God. Before I jump into the GT3, do you know what, Sam? I thought it would be a good idea to shut the circuit and just hang out on Eau Rouge. I'm not sure I'm getting the right line up through there. So I'd like you to show me the exact right line, but rather than going in the car, because we're not allowed to actually drive it now, I want you to run the racing line up our rouge right to the very top, okay? Come on, it starts no, it's fine, just go, just go from here. Ready? Right, yeah. Three, two, one, go, I'm timing you. Oh, 
All the way to the top. I can't believe he's actually doing this. Keep going. I'm fast as <laughs> boy. <laughs> His hamstrings must be on fire. That's the correct racing line. Sam is the driving instructor that goes above and beyond the call of duty to help make sure his clients are as good as they can possibly be. Anyway, let's get back into the cars <laughs> and see what my time is in the GT3. Can't believe it did that. That was 44 seconds. Right, let's go in the GT3. First off, warm the car up. It's definitely not as noisy. Even now I can just see way more responsive. I don't know whether that's just the double wishbone suspension on the front compared to the McPherson strut in the Cayman or the fact this has rear wheel steering. I also feel that it just seems more planted. Like the traction you get out of the turns with the engine of the rear axle. You can feel it sit, can't It you? sits better, doesn't it? I just seem to have more confidence in this car. Right, here we go then. Let's do it. Satisfying when you nail our like rouge. <laughs> Getting early onto the curve. There you go. Pick it up. Chase it out. Go. Give it the exit. Whoa! Yeah. Drop it. Good. Go. Yes. Go, go, go. Push it. Push through it. In early. Rotation. Pick it up on the throttle. Run the exit curve. Now flat. All of the green. Good. Inside left. Go. to say too much this it just gives you more confidence the front end the way it's just keyed into the track i mean i'm going to call it now that felt quicker but sometimes when you feel that you're quicker <laughs> you're actually going slower but i think this is going to be quicker i'll have been quicker in this let's send cameraman adam out and then we'll compare times We've now done our laps, we've got the times in, you've ingested them into the computer and you have the facts as to which car was quickest and our lap times. But before we go with data, let's go with the subjective feeling of Adam's bottom <laughs> when you're in the cars. Which do you think felt the quickest? The quickest was actually, I felt, the GT4 RS. But the GT3 felt more fun. I'd have said the exact opposite. I'm utterly confused by that. Okay, shall we look at the data and see what the data actually says? I think I was quick in the GT3, without a doubt. So your best lap time in the Cayman was a 244.3. It's all right. Yeah. What's my best lap time in the GT3? It's quicker, no doubt. It's a 242.6. So that's almost two seconds. Almost two seconds, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it gets more interesting though. So my best time in the GT4 was a 241.8-ish. Okay, so you're quicker than me when you're in the GT4 RS and I'm in the GT3. Correct. Okay. But my quickest in the GT3 was a 239 dead, which uh -huh. is about two seconds. Okay. So we both found the same amount of pace in the GT3 over the GT4 in our own way. Well, I actually think you increased your pace because it's over two seconds for you and it's less than two seconds for me. So you really exploited that GT3, didn't you? Yeah, and it's, it's all down to the front axle. I could carry so much more speed into the high speed corners in the GT3 than the GT4. The, the GT4 just started to wash a little bit. Okay, when we look at the data, um, I quicker through all the corners, so my minimum's quicker in the GT3 generally. Your minimums in the corner are, they balance out about the same, but it's how much speed you carry in. You're five to 10K up on an average across all of them. And especially in the high speed, you're, you're 10 to 20K up in some places. So you're way, way faster. So in those two frightening corners, yeah. Puon, 
and Blanchemont, the ones where I just like, you know, they made me frightened. How much quicker am I getting in the GT3? You're an average of 10 on both, 10K quicker on both. And that's just confidence. Those are the corners where I lack the confidence to really push the car, and the GT3 just gives me a bit more that I know it's gonna hook up better, Correct. so I'll chuck it in a bit quicker. Correct, but if we look at it in the Delta point of view, that finds you, that corner alone, a second. Ooh. So, you know, you can say 10K, but when you put it down to actual time, that's a second quicker, so that's a, a big chunk. And the same to be said for Puon. And the difference between me and you, am I close to your minimums, but it's, is it, what, what's the difference? Where are you just quicker than me? Yeah, so again, our minimums when we're actually on the apex are very, very similar. So I'm later on the brakes, I carry more speed to the apex, but then on corner exit, we're almost identical. And then it's just in the high speed stuff, into Puon, your really worst corner. You're, you're about 35K down <laughs> That's a lot of speed. And that's, that's the difference between us. Like, you know, my best time in the three is almost four seconds off of you. And it's that my balls just aren't as big as yours, Sam. Or you're more intelligent than I am. Maybe How it's does that. It play? <laughs> so anyway, if you pause the video now, you can see our lap time side by side so you can compare them. Adam, you were so wrong. You are absolutely wrong. Rubbish. I mean, that is the worst. Oh. You know, I do, I mean, Honestly, do you know what? So you said you're not going to put VBox out of business with your bottom. Answer yourself. I tried hard for those laps, and you just give me this. Right there. His job is to actually just film us. So yeah. everything's okay as long as all these shots are in focus. If they're not, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Game over. over. So then we come to the final verdict. And Sam, which of these two cars do you think is best as a racing driver, but taking into account, you're gonna to have to drive them to the track as well. It's this, it's all day long. It's faster on track. It's got more positive turn in. It actually feels faster on track. I don't know why that is. And then the journey here, much more refined, quieter, just a nicer place to be, I think. And you know what? I completely agree. I love this car. I love the induction noise, but when you back to back it with the GT3, you can tell that that is its bigger brother. And that's why this car, the 911 GT3, wins this test. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. If you wanna watch some more videos, then click on the boxes which are appearing somewhere now. Also, there's another box which you can click to go to Carway to sell your car the easy way. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. One last thing to say, huge thanks to RMA Track Days for making this all possible.